Welcome to the Wealthy Lala Show with myself, Lori Larson. Today is episode 250. Um, and so with the last bunch of Fridays, uh, I have been doing the It's Not, Not Your Money book by Tasha Silver, How to Live Fully from Divine Abundance. So this is just one way of the ways we can tap into, you know, abundance in the universe. And uh, I, I really enjoyed this book. This last uh, chapter was really small and um, was just kind of a little bit of uh, giving examples of people being willing to surrender even more. So I'm going to start off with the full abundance change me prayer. Ah, divine beloved, allow me to give with complete ease and abundance, knowing that you are the unlimited source of all. Let me be an easy, open conduit for your prosperity. Let me trust that all my own needs are always met in amazing ways and that it's safe to give freely as my heart guides. And equally, let me feel wildly open to receiving. May I know my own value, beauty, and worthiness without question. Let me allow others the supreme pleasure of giving to me. May I feel worthy to receive in every possible way. Change me into one who can fully love, forgive, and accept myself, so I may carry your light without restriction. Let everything needs, that needs to go, go. Let everything that needs to come, come. I am utterly your own. You are me. I am you. We are one. All is well. Um, it's interesting because as I'm reading that or as I read that, I can perceive the difference from when I first started to read it. I didn't remember to do it every day like she recommends and, and encourages, uh, but I would say that I read it at least five times on average a week. And, uh, you know, she just kind of says, like in this last chapter, just continue to do the steps for the final week and however long you need. And I can really notice a difference in my willingness to receive the abundance prayer, my willingness to have a uh, be more energetically congruent with it, uh, much more willing to receive uh, abundance in all different ways. And like I shared earlier this week when I met with my girlfriend that I used to work with and we were chatting and I heard myself say, you know, I just kind of wonder if it, what the universe, like that if I was imagining what the universe would say to me, it would say, well, Lori, just everything you're doing right now is just fine. This is exactly where we want you to be. And with regards to business, money, job, whatever, um, just, just trust. And that was something I get that I learned that I could receive after having chosen to like go through this book. Uh, she gives, she had another uh, lady who wrote after doing this book, she said, so many fabulous things have come as a result of offering, hearing the course and saying the abundance prayer daily. They came so fast and frequently, it's both joyous and humorous to list them. So she found $20 in the pocket of an old coat that was begging her to put it on. Another $20 from someone who claimed they'd accidentally left it out of her Christmas gift. Pertinent messages from audiobooks and commercials that arrived the instant I offered. Snow days, pre precisely when I needed to catch up on work. Someone had no idea about certain medical condition uh, I have, and they handed her a book with every, every needed rem remedy. And most days, amazingly, no more guilt for dropping an array of psychic vampires from my life. And there are too many more to continue. I'm having a blast offering. I find better it better than any entertainment. Answers and solutions pop up constantly. And no answer feels like it's one, two. It's just not yet or not needed. I can barely remember how I used to stumble along in the dark, so confused, yet not including God, the divine, or the universe. And I, uh, it has so helped me uh, lessen the doing that I felt that I needed to do in life. And it's 
my life has become more of a being, more of a receiving, more of a gentleness and a sweetness. Um, I'm finding that I'm so much more present with my life, with what I'm choosing, with what I'm aware of, with even being aware of myself. And that is just freaking awesome. Um, yeah, she's got another story that I actually really enjoyed in this chapter. Uh, she was, okay, so just one sec here. Okay. So this is a light luggage story. So this entire journey has been about getting lighter. So she is referring to this book, right? Lightening the emotional burden you carry from the past, lightening the clutter from your house, lightening your private personal collection of resentments and vendettas. In fact, you're releasing anything that's blocked the flow. So once she was packing a, a trip for a trip to um, two places in her favorite towns in Mexico, perched in the mountains of Mexico, when I'm not one of, uh, well, I, while I am not one of those schleps who packs two hair dryers and six pairs of shoes, I did have a normal size suitcase with enough clothes for warm days, cold nights, and rain. Oh, and a few books. Well, 10 minutes before my ride, I pulled the zipper to its final close and the entire thing ripped to shreds. It was done. There was the inevitable minute of, are you freaking kidding me, with no time to repack? But then, because you calibrate fast, the more you offer, little time was wasted resisting. I offered the entire mess to love. As I took a few, few deep breaths, a new thought rose over the horizon. Wrong bag, just take the teensy one. So I grabbed my carry-on though I'd be traveling for two weeks. With no time to ponder, I asked God, divine source, to take over my body and show me what should come. My brain became quiet while my hands combed through stuff and just grabbed. Sweater, bathing suit, yoga stuff, item after item was flung into the bag. No books, computer put back under the bed. The second I was finished, my phone buzzed. The ride was here. But here's what's interesting. First, I flew from San Francisco to LA to class to catch the leg to Mexico. And because there's an eternal divine dictate that all flights into LAX must circle for at least 20 minutes before landing and then taxi for another 20 while they wonder why the hell there's no freaking gate, we were really late. With only minutes to spare, I ran to the next terminal for Mexico, rolling the carry-on like a happy child. I wonder if people's checked bags would get there in time. They did not. Many hours later, she got dropped in the center of the bustling uh, town where I hadn't been in years. I planned on staying at a hotel that seemed like an amazing treehouse online. When I asked someone how to find it, she pointed straight up a tumble downhill full of colorful homes and giggled um, 300 steps. <laughs> no problema. With the magic carry on, this was just the morning workout, but I shudder to think what would have occurred if I'd have lugged the other bag. Throughout the trip, I constantly marveled at how the divine had insisted I not be burdened with a heavy bag. She had known ahead of time that all that was needed, and it was so much less than I'd ever guessed. Oh, I just love that. Like, oh, we are such a doing society. We've been taught to do. We've been praised for how much we get done. And what I'm learning through Dr. Joe Dispenza stuff, through Abraham Hicks, through reading this book, surrendering, opening yourself up to the divine source, the universe, allowing it to assist, us being willing to receive, us knowing our own value, that we are valuable by the fact that we're being here, not that because we're doing here. And, you know, um, gosh, you know, I, I, I don't know why this is popping, but I'm thinking of my daughter and uh, she did so well in school. 
like she got honors. She did. She was a great athlete. She's, you know, um, everything she kind of did just came with a sense of ease for her. And, you know, I could see where a lot of people would look at her and go, wow, she's just gifted. You know, she's got everything. Whereas she is just as human as the rest of us. And, you know, that goes for anything that anybody says about us. Like, and, you know, when I look back, I used to work two part-time jobs. I was on the board of a union. I had three kids. We lived an hour out of Edmonton and, uh, uh, like, to the closest city, an hour from where I used to work. So I had to drive an hour to work, um, to one of my work, and the other one was about a half an hour. I helped my husband farm. I do the farm paperwork. Um, you know, along with then throwing, oh, and I was volunteering in our, in our local community. So whether it was with the school, whether it was with Ukrainian dancing, whether it was with my husband when he was in the Lions Club, I was a part of that too. And I got sick. Now, it's not saying that you can do that. You can't do that because you'll get sick. But when you don't take, take care of yourself underneath that, when you don't take care of the you that is the foundation of everything that you're choosing, I really get that the more you be with you, the more you can actually do. And do from a congruent place. Do from a healthy place. Do from a place that creates greater not from a doing to prove, a doing to have to, a doing because you should, you know, but that actually being, being you, being present, being the space to receive, being the space to surrender is going to actually create so much greater in your life. And have you ever had one of those days, I think back to this one time that I went to the city and it was like four o'clock in the afternoon and all of a sudden I got the hit, you know, go to the city now. It was like a Monday. And I was like, really? Go to the city now? Because I just basically have had this general conclusion slash, you know, um, point of view that I like to go first thing in the morning. It's quieter, you know, less traffic while you do it during the day. and um, this was really loud. So I was like, okay, what the heck? I will go. So I remember jumping in the car. Well, me going into the city, I was going against all the traffic. So that was awesome. I, um, got into Costco. I remember my shopping. I was in and out of there in a half an hour. I went to another couple of places and I got my hair cut. So I basically probably got into the city about 5 30 maybe closer to six and I was leaving the city by eight o'clock and I'd even gotten a haircut. It, it was just incredible. So when we're actually willing to listen, hear the whispers of the universe, the universe knows the timing of what gathers everything together to make more ease for us. And it does not fit what we think all the time. Like somewhere along the line, you know, we've kind of decided that one size fits all. And that includes even one size fits all for ourselves. You know, that you should, like this last winter, when I kept getting the hit, don't go away in February, don't go away in February. I knew it was going to be a cold month. Well, you should go away in February, right? Because it's going to be cold. Why would you want to be here in Alberta? Well, it's cold. And something kept telling me, no, I want to be home because I get that I'd want to be home to take care of my house. And our furnace went during February. It was the whispers of the universe, me being willing to listen, that allowed me to hear that so that I could receive it. And then we could take care of it and it didn't become a problem. You know, and it's just like her talking in her book about her pack in her bag, what seems like a real crappy thing to have the zipper go, allowed her to create something different. And notice that what she did, she first went in to, to complaining and then realized that's not what she wanted to create. She got herself into a space of question, a, quas a, p a place of possibility, which then opened her up to the awareness of taking her carry on throwing in what would fit into there 
lightening her load and what it created for her for her two week trip that came up. The universe had her back. And, you know, the universe has our back in so many things that we don't even realize. You know, I don't know what, if I ever told this story on a show, but we never, I never wanted to move up here to Radway where we live right now. I said I'd never move up here. Why would I move up here? They're, they're just, you know, like I, I could give you lots of reasons. And all of a sudden one day it became very light. It changed. And we've now been up here for 21 years. And I love it. And in this 10 seconds, I don't see us ever leaving. Um, yeah. So, it, you know, and it was interesting because my husband wanted to move up here for five years before we did. And he was willing to be patient. And he knew that it wasn't a kindness to me or to him or to us and our family to take me up here any sooner than I was ready. And then one day it was like a little light bulb got clicked on and all of a sudden from that day forward it was light it i was open to it everything that seemed that i was right about before that i thought was wrong became a non-issue and it totally changed so uh, what i love about this book it's just so much about surrendering i would highly recommend reading it it was just really great even if you don't do the eight weeks in it do you just read through it there was such valuable information so it was tasha silver's book it's not your money so anyways you guys have a great weekend and take care thanks so much for listening and